Hi, I'm Christy Tomlinson, mixed media artist, and this is Art Redefined. No rules, just creative, messy play. Today we're going to be talking about um, art journals and making them out of vintage books. And I have guest Chrissy Gardner on that's going to teach us how when we come back. All right, we are back, and I am excited today because we have Chrissy Gardner as my guest. Chrissy Gardner is a mixed media artist, um, and she's also a fabric artist. She makes jewelry. She is just creatively brilliant all the way oh, around. I love you. your work. Thanks. Um, so today you're going to show us how to make an art journal. That's right. Out of a vintage book. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. We're going to take some books, some old books, and repurpose them into an art journal. And there's just hundreds of books out there waiting for us to just make them into something wonderful. And, and I love, and what are art journals? Like what, for those well, of you, you that know, don't know. An art journal can be almost anything, especially if you're a mixed media artist, because we, there's no rules. We just get in and we play. You can keep, um, you can take pages out and do finished products. You can go in there and just experiment with different techniques, techniques that you learn, you know, what classes are on, on your show. And, love you it. know, just if you have an idea of something you want to do, or maybe even just use it as a sketchbook. And even something like this, these kind of books, you can use to, you know, um, give as gifts. If you just wanted to keep the pages blank, I love give it that. as a journal. There's so many different things you could do with it. So what we want to do is we want to get some old books. And okay. like I said, a lot of books out there. I see um, all these over here. One of the things that I really love to do is go to the thrift stores. And I know you love to love do that it. too. We've I love it. Together. Um, thrift stores are just treasure chests for mixed media artists. They just have some wonderful, wonderful things. So I see it doesn't matter what book you get because you have thin books here, but then you have this ginormous, gigantic, huge book. You're right, book. you're right. So, so I went to my local thrift store and I came back with just a stack of books. I like to choose the books only the middles don't matter at all because we're going to be taking those out. Okay. So I choose my books based on the cover and the shape of the cover and what I want my journal to look like when it's awesome. done. Awesome. So whatever size you want it or whatever, yeah. that's what size exactly. you buy. This is like a children's book. We have bigger so ones if you cool. want to get big. It just kind of depends I on what your it. purpose is and what, you're, what you um, like to do with it. Awesome. So we're going to start. Okay. We're going to take our book and what we're going to do is open it up with the spine down. Okay. And we're going to take a box cutter. You could just probably you take probably it. need a craft mat yes. underneath here. Yes, you're going to want that for sure. I, don't want I think you've got it over there. The table. And oh, but we like marks on the table, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> That's what my kids think. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're right in between the, um, the cover of the book and the pages. We're, there's a little seam, and it's just a little paper seam, and we're just going to cut down there. It's really easy to cut. So we're going to do that on the front. Then we're going to cut it over to the other side, and if you want, you can do that one too. Oh, okay. It's just easy. Just it slips right what through. What happens if you go all the way through to it's the okay. cover? It's okay. It won't matter because you're going to do it anyway. Oh, okay. So then, what we're going to do is we're going to take the book, and these came out super easy. Yeah, but sometimes that was you have crazy. to tear them out. Um, usually, they do come out easier. Not that quite that easy. So what we're uh, we're going to save our pages because it's it's in say. mixed media we yep. love old books and old pages. You can always do something with this. So don't love throw it. that away. I always save those. Love that. So now our next step is we are going to take our book and we're going to put it down with the fol the folder side up. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take your um, box cutter or an exacto knife. You can do this with scissors too if the um, cover is thin enough. Usually it's if it's an old book, it's been worn. It's oh, yeah. kind of like a linen, a crackly linen material. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut right along the spine of the book and the cover. So you're cutting the piece, yes. you're cutting the two pieces off. Exactly. I'm cutting the spine off from the cover. Cool. And you could do this with scissors. Okay. Um, just depends on what you like to work with. I like to just freehand it. Oh, I'm You're not, doing fine. Um, so I'm known for her. not um, cutting straight lines. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm glad you did that because the thing about mixed media that I yeah. was just going to say, some people might want to go back in and clean that up with scissors. Some people might want to cut I more straight. I actually like that. I like that in my mixed media product projects. I, love it. I like the texture. And so I would just p pick off the little edges and I would okay. leave it. Do you keep this or do you huck you it? You could, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would use it inside of a journal. everything. Yep. So, yeah, this would definitely go back into my um, bin. Awesome. The, so now that we have our both of our covers cut, okay. we're going to start thinking about our pages. And like I said in the beginning, I like to keep the book pages that come 
that come out of the book. And one of the reasons why is that I like to make my own pages in my art journals. I just think it gives it a little I bit more in here. Artsy this you can feel. see they are actual pages from books. Yeah. But not necessarily the page that came out of this book, no. but mm -mm. yeah, cool. and you could do that. One thing about doing it that way is that the pages are already cut to fit the, the cover Love that you're it. making for your art journal. So what I like to do is I like to, because when we get in with mixed media, we like to get messy and we yep. texturize things and we layer up. So what I like to do, the pages are just a little bit too thin. So I will take maybe three or four or five pages. It just kind of depends on what you want. And I'll tear them off there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some gel medium and, and you can use gel medium, yeah. um, Mod Podge, Absolutely. Deco Podge, yeah, any kind of glue. Whatever your preference is, awesome. any kind of glue. And we're just going to make, a. Th it's not going to be a lot, it's just going to be a thin little layer. And we are just going to cover our page with this gel medium. And so basically you're just going to stick each page together. Yeah, we're basically making a thicker page. I love and it. And you don't have to be precise or exact on how you cover it. It just is not an exact science. And then we're going to cover it with our next piece of paper. And this and just, just makes it thicker. I like to take a piece of, you can use a brayer, you can use your fingers, you can even leave it. But I just take an old credit card and get the bubbles out. And then we just Love do it. the next, you know, we would just do another. Keep going until yeah, you have absolutely. the thickness mm -hmm. that you want. We would just do that again. So what we do with, I, what I do with those then is I lay those aside and I let those dry. Okay. And they might dry in a little, you know, they might not dry flat. They sometimes okay. dry in yep, a little when curve. They I've noticed that. And that's okay. I actually like that in my books. I do if too. If you don't, when it gets close to starting to dry, just pick up one of your old books, heavy books, and lay it on top of it. And what we get when it's done is this heavier page. Love it. And I actually love, again, the raw sides, the raw edges. I use those on, on the, outside? the outside of my books. That is a brilliant but you idea. you can cut them and clean them up however you would like. I love it. Yeah, that so that's what we do with that. Another great idea for making pages is to just take over, take an old magazine. And what I like to do, we all have magazines laying around, is I'll just take off the cover. And then what I do is almost the same idea, is that I just take about maybe three or four or five pages and I rip that whole thing off. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just take our and Gel mod podge medium. the pages mm -hmm. together. Exactly, same thing. Because magazine pages are a little bit thinner and more flopsy to work with, it's gonna dry up with a lot more bubbles mm -hmm. and a lot more waves. Um, it actually kind of dries like this. I'm not sure if you can oh, see yeah. that. Oh yeah, I actually love the texture but of that. I love that too. Because it, it's you just more artsy. you're doing a mixed media pro yeah. project, it's all about layering and texture. So I like that it does this. Okay, so now um, you have this image on here mm -hmm. and you don't want this image, exactly. so what are you gonna do to exactly. cover it? <laughs> so what you wanna do, if you have pages that have um, images on there that you wanna cover, and especially if you're gonna be adding paint, such as acrylics or oils, you wanna be able to have the paper to be able to pick that up. So you're just gonna take some gesso, which is a primer mm -hmm. that you can use for paint. And you're just gonna layer on, it's really thick, you're just gonna layer on a good layer and you wanna cover all the parts that are gonna... And gesso gonna... comes in black and white. Yeah. And good. not all gesso, all gessos are created equal. If you've taken any of my classes, you know that there is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And so just depending on what you're going to do with the art journal, some are really gritty. Um, so whatever you put on them is gonna have a lot of grit um, and tooth to behind yeah. them. Some of them are really fine and smooth. So. And that's what's so great about making these art journals is then yep. you can buy the different ones and get in there and experiment. See what you like. Write down, I keep notes in mind. This is what I liked about this. This is what I didn't. I love so it. when I go back for different projects and I can't exactly remember, and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And you know. actually once you're, it's dried, it dries to a really, the great thing about um, gesso is that it, is crackle resistant, so your pages aren't gonna crackle. I so when you that. get in there, and then it's give, it gives you just a little bit thicker, heavier paper. Cool. And you can cut it down to the books to fit, Size. you know, yeah, absolutely. The last it. thing I'm gonna show you is making, um, making your pages out of watercolor paper. You can go to almost any art store and buy huge sheets of watercolor paper, and what I did with this is I just took my, um, I took my, cover and I laid it out on the big sheet of watercolor paper 
and I just measured, I measured it down, and then I actually like to tear my watercolor paper. So you get the ripped edge yeah, like on the journal. Yeah, so I would just measure it, and then actually just, watercolor paper tears very easy. If you just bend it or score it, then I would just take it and tear it into the size that I want. Love it. So I love watercolor paper in journals just because, um, especially when you're working with um, like watercolor crayons and wax pastels and those, they just um, work so well. And you don't have to, with most watercolor paper, you don't have to gesso the paper yeah. to get the um, exactly. watercolor. Exactly, especially for giving this as a gift to maybe an artist who uses mostly watercolor or a lot of fluids. That's a good idea. Yeah, I really love this. I didn't think about giving an empty one to an artist. Yeah, but what an no, awesome I've done idea. It I love gifts. it. I love I mean, it. Really work out great. great. So, Friends, guess what you're getting for Christmas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the next thing you want to do is decorate your cover. I've actually so decorated this is a cover that is so one. cute. So this was a book originally, this and that you book. covered. Yeah. Okay. I just covered my cover mm -hmm. with gel medium again. Yeah. Rubbed out the things, and on the back, I did want to cover. You know, so it doesn't look okay. ugly on the inside. So after you covered the book um, this way, yeah. then you put another piece. Exactly. That you cover I just Got would it. cut out one that would match and that cover size that. and cover it. So you have Love both it. sides. Cut. Okay, so now that we have our covers cut, we are ready in our pages, we're ready to bind our book. So what okay. I do is I take my two covers and I just line them up. And this is just eyeballed. Okay. I just kind of decide where I want to punch the holes and I just mark. So maybe I want one there and maybe I want one there. You, it's a preference, you can okay. use two, three, so as many holes as you want. Yeah. As much work like this one you have. That one has two. two. This one has two. And then this big, great, big, wonderful wow. thing. I know it looks intimidating, but it's wonderful when you're going to be punching through tin or cardboard or something really thick. This one is the Crocodile 2. But you just put it in. You slide it in and punch a hole, and it goes right through that heavy thickness. That's awesome. So we're just going to punch right where we, we marked our thing. And then we're going to use this as a guide to mark our other. That's a our brilliant idea. That's awesome. I love so it. So I'll mark that. And then I'll punch this one. Oh my goodness. It goes through anything. Yeah, it does. It's I really love awesome. it. Now we have our covers, and I'm just, I use this mm -hmm. as a guide again, as the a pattern. Punch all your yeah, to punch our pages. So we want to get the edges pretty straight again it's and the things I love about this is that you can punch through a lot of paper oh yeah so we'll be yeah. able to punch through exactly. all that paper that at once. whole thing so I mark my pages again and this that's the great thing about this you can just stick that whole pile in there and there we go that is awesome isn't that great yeah okay so now we have our pages a smart woman invented this <laughs> That's what I heard. So then we have our cover, we have our pages, our holes are punched. Now we're just gonna line everything up. And what I like to do, what I did with these ones is I actually bound the books with ribbon, but you could use anything. You could use leather, you could use those metal rings. Um, and then we just start, what I did with my ribbon is I actually covered with it with some masking tape because the ribbon is hard to go through the small hole. She is a smart one, because so. I would sit there for hours <laughs> and try and get the ribbon through. Oh, believe me, I tried. Yes, so I, I just it. thread through. Almost like a needle. Yeah, it's just So like just my basic, sewing. it's just tape, scotch tape that you covered it with? Absolutely, yeah, Love anything it. would work actually. Brilliant, so. brilliant. We just go through our pages. Smart little cookie girl. And our back cover. When you tie off your book, you don't want to make it so loose that all your pages hang down, but you also want to make it tight enough that it's going to, um, or give it a little, as much slack so that you're going to be able to open it up when and to lay it, it flat. Awesome. So in case you want to keep your pages in there and to work at it. I, I it. recommend maybe not tying it so tight. If you're one of those kind of people who likes to just work on a very flat surface, then you can untie it and take your pages out to work on your art journal pages. So um, maybe like only add one ribbon to start and then when you're finished, add the rest of yeah, the ribbons. Yeah, exactly. Love it. And so then I would just do that to the top and the bottom as we did here. And then I just kind oh, of cute. added some extra little ribbons Ring just to for, it. yeah and I um, love this one yeah and this one I just kind of hung you can almost do anything I, I seriously love this little piece here that you have yeah you put art little. in that little clock oh, cute. and just hung some little 
fun doodads off the edges. Look at the back. She has another one of her little fun things. A decorate. You can get oh, crazy or you can do it as simple as you want. Right. Um, my kids helped me decorate some of the pages in here. Thank I you. I love it. What a great they idea. They were awesome. Well, so. this is so beautiful. And I love that it's so easy that I could do it. Um, my kids could yeah, do it. Something yeah. that you could do. And great gifts. I just love and it. And we always have lots of leftover books. How many books yes, do you always donate? Do. And it feels good to be able to repurpose and I use it, it for something different. Well, thank you so much thank for you. being on the show, Thanks Chrissy. So I appreciate you, Chrissy fun. Gardner, for being here thank and you. how to make um, journals out of vintage books. So we will see you next time on Art Redefined.